so we are heading out of Universal, but we're gonna try something again now, I guess, that we tried a couple days ago. I'm gonna try to go to the Disney Studios, um, I guess, animation area um, and see if I can get in again today. That'd be kind of awesome if I can. If not, that's fine. We're still gonna go to Disneyland and have kind of like an evening there. Um, so I'm not raising my hopes today like I was a couple days ago, but it'll be a nice surprise if we can. That'd be cool. So I don't know if you can see it, but right there on the right, you can see the Warner Brothers studio right over there. I think that's like right next to the, uh, the Disney studio that we're on our way to try to go and visit. Hmm. That's super cool. They have a studio tour too. Interesting. I guess this whole, like, this is all sound stages? Is that possible? Oh yeah, that's right. This is where you can go to like the central perk. You know who lives in the water tower? The Animaniacs? Yeah, they do. All right guys, we did it. We are in the Walt Disney Studio. I have a map right here. All the places that I'm allowed to go. It was kind of a little bit honestly confusing because we pulled up to security again and they kind of gave me like a little bit of a cold shoulder. I guess not a hard time, but they kind of confused me and then I drove around to the back to a different gate and uh, I pulled in and at first I thought I was only able to go to a specific Disney store where they sold merchandise, but I talked to a cast member at the counter there and they said that uh, I'm a cast member so I have clearance to go wherever I'd like and bring my guests wherever I'd like. So right back there, I believe that is the Team Disney building because we are right here in the Legends Plaza. This is where they have a bunch of the handprints that are Disney Legends that were able to come and make their mark. I don't know if these are actually the, uh, you know, the handprints or if they're copies or how that works, but down here we have a partner statue. You've seen this at many a theme park, Disney theme parks. And then over here we have a Roy Disney statue with a little Minnie Mouse. And this is funny, they gave them scarves and hats for both of them. Totally didn't notice this at first, but Dopey is wearing a Santa hat up there. How in the world did they put a Santa hat on Dopey? And of course, right here we have Mr. Roy Disney and Miss Minnie Mouse. <laughs> I like that they put the Santa hat on her ear because I guess it wouldn't fit on her head. But that's still really cute. So there are definitely a lot of Disney legends here. Like, a lot. I think there are like, probably like 16 or so on every single pillar and then more, but man, this is so cool to see you guys. I am so, so, so glad they let us in here to do this. That is the main front entrance that we were turned away from twice before we finally found the right entrance and people to talk to, to assure us that we were okay to come in here and experience it. Because that's good. I don't wanna feel like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do, right? Here's Dick Van Dyke, another guy that I'm familiar with. A lot of these people I don't really, really know, and I'm sure they've had like a significant influence on my childhood and everything that I know and love today. So that is something I'm very, very fortunate and thankful for. Yeah, we're like right by these little things. A little bit tiny. That's where Disney have tiny hands? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of does. It's okay. <laughs> Here are the Sherman Brothers, responsible for a lot of tunes from Mary Poppins and It's a Small World and other songs that we know and love and are very familiar with. Here's Mr. Steve Martin. He has kind of wide hands, doesn't he? Oh, well, I guess I do too. <laughs> wow, Elton John. Yeah. Look, look at Fat, this. Fat, tiny hands. Fat, tiny hands. That's how I can play the piano so gracefully. Here we have Mr. Tim Allen. That's cool. I wonder if these are the actual impressions of their handprints. I mean, I'm sure they would be. This is where they would be if they were real, right? Here's Mr. Alan Minkin doing some beautiful music and composing for Disney over the years. Another musician here, Mr. Phil Collins, doing some beautiful work on Tarzan and Brother Bear. Here's Lillian Disney and Edna Disney. <laughs> Miss Betty White, Bay Arthur, Estelle Getty, Rue, McLanahan. I think they're from the Golden Girls, right? I don't know that show. Oh no, you guys should hold hands sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Jim Henson doing some work with Disney with the Muppets and Sesame Street. That's not really Disney, but 
he did some good stuff. So I'm starting to notice some intentional groupings of some of these. Jody Benson was the voice of Ariel. Paige O'Hara was the voice of Belle. Uh, Anika was the voice of Tiana. And then Leia here was the voices, the singing voices of Mulan and I believe Jasmine. And then over here you have Billy Crystal, who was the voice of Mike in Monsters, Inc. And then, of course, John Goodman, who was the voice of Sully. And wow, he has big hands. Also over here we have Mr. Steve Jobs and Dick Clark. Here we have Miss Madame Leota Tombs of Imagineering and Attractions, who was the, I believe, the inspiration for Madame Leota. Right across the way here we have Mr. Johnny Depp, Mr. Danny Elfman, and then George Lucas down here. Hey, and here we have uh, Mr. Randy Newman, who's pretty much done like half of the Pixar scores for all of Pixar's music compositions. And then right here, Mr. Marty Scalar, the late Imagineer, who's responsible for pretty much everything that everybody loves inside Disney parks. All right, the last ones we need to check out are these over here behind Walt Disney, see if there's anybody over there that we recognize. Huh, I don't really know any of those guys. Is it conceited to wonder if Walt Disney is a Disney legend? Uh, I don't think he's a Disney legend, I think he's the Disney legend. Ah, that's fair enough, I guess. <laughs> all right, Mickey and Walt, thanks for showing us around and introducing us to all your friends. Brennan, what are you doing in there? I feel like the weirdest thing about this is that we can touch Walt and Mickey. Like, Brennan, you just booped Mickey on the nose. Oh, you did it again. <laughs> nice. When normally there's like a four foot garden here and we're on the ground, so we're looking up at Walt like this. But we can go up and touch him. You okay? Mm -hmm. Having a little cough attack? Yep. It's okay. Still getting over being sick. Aw. All right, now over here, this is the Frank G. Wells building. Uh, let's go inside and see what's in there. I don't know if I'll film anything in there. I want to be kind of safe when it comes to filming inside the studio. Um, but we'll see what, there's, what there is to see. Over here is just a collection of a bunch of shoes worn in various Disney films. Super cool. So adjacent to the Team Disney building over there and then the courtyard right here is the animation building and this is the building right here if my camera decides to focus. There it goes. There goes Brennan off exploring. You know what Brennan and I were talking about is that this feels very much so just like a college campus, just somewhere that you could just kind of walk around and relax and take a seat on the grass and enjoy your day. So I don't know where, but somewhere around the animation building, I'm pretty sure is where they shot scenes from Saving Mr. Banks. So that's really cool that we're here. It's really cool that we're here in the first place because this is where Walt Disney made his studio. This is where he made movies and magic happened. Up there through the trees you have the Walt Disney water tower. So that's pretty cool too. So I think this is one of the main entrances to the animation building. We're not allowed to go in there right now I think because they're doing stuff but then right across the street is the screening building and I think they're doing an advanced screening right now of Star Wars. A couple last places of interest that they told us to check out were the Buena Vista Cafe which is right here and apparently this is one of the oldest places where they would serve food. So the building that we are currently in right now is the Buena Vista Cafe. 
Um, that is one of the buildings of significance that she told us to check out the cast member that I talked to. Um, apparently it used to be, I guess more in its heyday, like a pretty big place of where people would come and eat and congregate, but now it's kind of more of a grab and go kind of a situation, but she said to still check it out because it was still important and significant to the Disney history. Walked over here to appreciate this beautiful tree. Oh, there's a gym here too. Oh, a gym. There is a gym upstairs. Of course oh, there is. Gym. What? That's how you said it. Uh, right here, this is the Hyperion bungalow, and I'm gonna do a little research about this and I'll tell you about it in a second. You know, at first glance, you wouldn't really think that this tiny little house has any significance at all, but after doing some research, uh, uh, this website I found says, as one of the oldest buildings on the Walt Disney Studios lot, the uh, bungalow is chock full of history. It was originally located at the same place that Mickey Mouse came to life, at the Hyperion Studios in the Silver Lake neighborhood of Los Angeles. When Walt's operations started to outgrow their space in Silver Lake, he started to work on the studio space in Burbank. And in December of 1939, Disney and his team began the move to the new Walt Disney Studios along with four historic buildings, including the building now known as the Bungalow. So this bungalow right here was transplanted right here. So this is one of the oldest buildings on the entire property. And now we're gonna walk back through the only building that we thought we were gonna be able to walk into today, the Disney Studio Store. Are you happy that it turned out differently? Oh yeah. <laughs> So, uh, are these things the new Disney Tsum Tsums? Because I don't understand them. They smell very nice though. I'm so happy. Uh, this was like the only place that I thought we were gonna be able to walk in and check out and we got to check out the entire studio today. I'm so happy. You know, some people like their Tsum Tsums this big, but personally, I like them this big. This is a big Mickey, big boy. So, we just checked out from the employee center here and I got a cool little shirt that says Walt Disney Studios, which was exclusive to, I guess, here. So I, I had to get it and it was a pretty nice discount. Also, I wanted to amend something I said about the Hyperion Bungalow over here. Uh, it's actually, it would say, built in 1935, the Hyperion Bungalow was a building on the original Walt Disney Studios lot known as the Hyperion Studio. It was the original home of the comic strip department and Disney publicity. Once uh, Roy and Walt uh, bought the new land in Burbank, oh no, go back. Once Roy and Walt bought the land in, in Burbank, which is where we are now, they moved the entire building to the new lot because it was cheaper than the construction of a new building. It's a great piece of history uh, sitting on the lot that holds so many Disney memories. Ooh. I butchered the reading of that because I'm always nervous when I read stuff, but basically this is still one of the oldest buildings on property, so it's really cool and significant. All right, one more look at the uh, water tower before we head back to the garage and on to our next adventure tonight, which is what? Uh, all the nighttime stuff at Disneyland. Cool. We did it. We did it. I'm so happy we got to tour the Disney studio. We got to walk around where Walt walked around. We got to see and experience stuff where magic still happens. It just blows my mind. I feel so fortunate that like we were able to come do this. We've been tourists this entire week and this is when I like really felt like a part of the team, you know, that I'm contributing to this great magical thing that Disney does by being a cast member. And that's so cool. So now we're getting back in the car and drive like an hour and a half back to Anaheim to see if we can watch uh, the fireworks and a Fantasmic because that would be super cool because they were canceled the other night, the fireworks were, and um, we left before we could uh, watch Fantasmic the other night because I was feeling a little under the weather, but I'm feeling better now. So hopefully that feeling lingers of excitement and adrenaline and we can watch the fireworks and see Fantasmic tonight and uh, just have a good night. Real quick, I wanna show across the street is the Roy O. Disney Animation Building right over there with the Sorcerer hat and it looks so cool and I've seen it in pictures but I've never seen it in person but it's so pretty.